Hello, my name is Colleen McCarthy. I'm a plastic surgeon at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. This prospective cohort study examined three patient cohorts of women undergoing total skin sparing mastectomy with preservation of the nipple areolar complex and immediate two-stage expander implant reconstruction. The first cohort involved 90 cases in which no ADM was used. In fact, expander implant reconstruction was before, performed by placement of the expander in a subpectoral position, such that the infralateral pole of the expander was covered by mastectomy flaps alone. The second patient cohort involved 100 cases in which each consecutive case involved the use of ADM. More specifically, ADM was placed in the infralateral pole of the breast mound to cover the expander. In the third patient cohort, 260 cases were examined in which selective ADM was used. In these patients, the, or in this patient cohort rather, the authors suggest that ADM was used selectively in patients who had or were deemed to have thin mastectomy flaps at the time of expander placement. The authors eloquently present outcomes such as infectious complications, unexpected return to the operating room, and premature removal of the device. Infectious complications were significantly higher in the cohort of patients who had no ADM used. In fact, nearly one-third of these patients had an infectious complications. Similarly, unexpected return to the operating room for either an infectious complication or wound healing issues such as exposure of the device was significantly higher in the cohort of women who had no ADM used when compared to those who had consecutive ADM use or selective ADM use. And finally, the premature removal of an expander and or a permanent implant was also significantly higher in the no ADM cohort. The authors then went on to examine the impact of post-exchange radiotherapy on the development of long-term complications and deemed that the odds of developing a complication in this setting was significantly higher in the cohort of women who had selective ADM use when compared to those who had consecutive ADM use. The authors conclude that the use of ADM thus has protective benefits against infectious complications, unexpected return to the operating room, the premature removal of the device, and the protection of against complications that stem from post-exchange radiotherapy. This is an impe impressive uh, prospective series, to the best of my knowledge, and the only of its kind. Importantly, however, this data could not be extrapolated to demonstrate that ADM has protective benefits compared against tissue expander implant reconstruction when an expander is placed in a submuscular position. And I think this is an important distinction and certainly a question that in my mind remains unanswered. Impressively, however, the authors report a less than 4% partial nipple necrosis in this series of 450 women who've had total skin sparing mastectomy with preservation of the nipple areolar complex. The authors offer some technical pearls including the use of inframammary incisions and or mastectomy type incisions that involve less than one third of the diameter of the areola. In less than 5% of cases in this series, interestingly, a radial or lateral incision was used. In addition, the authors suggest that the time of the initial fill, up to 100 cc's of normal saline was placed at most, regardless of expander size and or the pliability or vascularity of the mastectomy skin flaps. Finally, this was a well-designed prospective cohort study, but inherent in its design uh, are flaws which include the potential for a learning curve to impact or bias the results. The no ADM cohort was the first cohort examined. It is possible that over time, the surgeons involved improved their patient selection and or technical issues, which may have led to improvement of complications. The authors do address this in the paper and suggest that data was compared to data collected before uh, the prospective cohort study began and that complications and outcomes were comparable. Unfortunately, however, this, is not a, this data is not available to the reader. In summary, my congratulations to the authors on an impressive series, and impressive paper. I think we can take away the fact that this does offer very good evidence that ADM may have protective benefits in the setting of expander implant reconstruction when compared against the use of an expander in a subpectoral position alone following nipple sparing or total skin sparing mastectomy. Thank you.